Lawnmowers can be fascinating to children. They may just see them as a toy. But did you know that each day here in the U.S., 13 children end up in the ER for a lawnmower-related injury? This is parent Sean and Melissa's story. We have a side of a yard that we mowed with a riding lawnmower, and that was me and Rowan's special thing together. Whenever I mowed the lawn, he would always come running and want to jump on. He just loved it. He sit right on the lap. He wouldn't make a sound. Six months ago, I needed to mow the lawn. Me and Rowan went outside to do our thing, and we had finished the grass in the front yard, and we were on towards the back. Rowan was thirsty, and he wanted a, a baba. He wanted to go in and get a, a baba. I let him off and I ran inside. So I started mowing forward, mowing back. As I'm going backwards, I'm looking behind me. And I'm looking to my left behind me while I'm reversing. And he was behind me and, and to the right. Uh, I ran over him. I don't remember how I got him out from underneath it. I don't remember how getting in the car. I just knew that his arm looked like it was barely holding on. The only thing, as far as I could tell, I was holding his hand on was the skin. I could see his bones and his thigh. It looked like a bomb had gone off. I heard screaming. Then I heard Sean ran upstairs and he started yelling, I hit him, I hit him. I didn't prepare myself quite for what I was about to see. Get in the car and go. When we got close to the hospital, he was continually bleeding this whole time. Uh, you know he's in trouble because how much blood can a little three-year-old have? And he started to, he started to get quieter and started to whimper. Melissa's screaming, she starts screaming louder. She's saying, no, she's saying, you know, we can start calling his name. He's like, we're like Rowan. She's like, Rowan? She's screaming, Rowan. And I look over and he's, he's not making any noise. And you're thinking, he's, he's dead. He, he, he's dead. I remember walking in the emergency room there at the trauma center. And all I saw was white coats. And I just remembered angels. I was just so happy to see just a, a room full of doctors. I don't know how long he was in surgery. I know it was a while. I'm just assuming that he's going to lose his arm. He's going to lose his leg. So they come to talk to us. And then she said, he's missing his toes. But then she said, they were able to save his heel. And she said that's encouraging because you can still walk on the heel pad. I'm like, okay, she, they're starting with the good news. And here comes the other surgeon to tell me that he's going to lose his arm. The doctor told us he was going to keep his arm. He was able to keep his hands. He has all the blood vessels and nerves still intact to keep his hand alive. And we knew that it was going to be a long, hard road. But the doctors, the surgeons, they, they gave us hope. I will always feel guilty and sad. I ran over Rome. Now, looking back, never would have let them be outside when I'm on the lawn. Melissa and Sean join us, and the, the pain, as you recounted that story, the pain I see in your faces now is there, but I, I think you're incredibly brave to share this story. And this is, I'm sure, something that you would prefer not to have to talk about. One of the things that's helped me is talking about it and being open about it and the struggle that it's been for us and our family. And not just that, but turning such a tragedy into something, um, turning into awareness. And one thing we've just tried to do is um, just openly talk about it, warn about the dangers of how dangerous these lawnmowers can be. And Sean and Melissa, both of you guys, um... I know have processed this a lot and dealt with it a lot. And individuals who go through something like this, you're the parents, you feel responsible, you're supposed to keep your kids safe, and that's where the guilt comes from. But absolutely, to sort of ward off that post-traumatic stress from impacting your lives in a more significant way, processing it and talking about it does help, and looking forward, right? And you bring awareness and helping to educate the public about this is a huge step in that. I just want to say that um, I believe that God was with Rowan every step of the way. Mm -hmm. And um, God, our love, and the support, um, our amazing support team, was the only way that we got through it. And every single person, every single person that was a part of his recovery is an angel. 
and every single one of their names is written is written in my heart forever.